Gambella, Ethiopia is open for sale. In February 2011, Ethiopia's Minister of Agriculture announced that his government has 3.9 million hectares of farmland set aside for foreign investors. Much of the land on offer is in the region of Gambella, located in the southwest of Ethiopia. Details of the land deals with foreign investors are shrouded in secrecy. But of the 800,000 hectares of land made available for foreign investment in Gambella, some 650,000 hectares of deals have already been reported to the press. The greatest interest has been from Indian and Saudi investors, eager for cheap farmland to feed their growing populations. The drive behind land grabbing is not to feed the world, it's about get control of land. It's, it's, it's about making money. It's about privatization of land. It's about big investment companies, especially from the finance sector, uh, pension funds, uh, banks, who have come to realize after the financial crisis that uh, land is actually a good commodity to invest in. Meet the players in Yandala. Sai Ramakrishna Karaturi of Karaturi Global, the poster boy for the land grab in Ethiopia. Karaturi is a cut flower company from India with ambitions to become the world's leading food producer. To breathe life into Ethiopia's stagnant agriculture sector, Prime Minister Meles Zenawi is wooing foreign firms by offering them leases of huge tracts of land at rock-bottom prices. Karaturi tractors and well-drilling rigs are transforming the pastoral landscape. Critics describe Karaturi as a neo-colonialist, grabbing Ethiopia's land at bargain prices and exporting profits and food while Ethiopians go hungry. From his least 300,000 hectares in Gambela, he plans to export $1 billion worth of crops per year in the near future. Ethiopian Saudi tycoon billionaire Sheikh Mohammed Hussein al Ahmoudi of the Saudi Star Agricultural Development Company. He plans to develop more than 250,000 hectares of rice and other crops to export to Saudi Arabia as part of the Saudi Kingdom's food security initiative. Ruchi Soya one of India's largest edible oil companies, currently expanding into overseas soybean production with 50,000 hectares. Because of the food crisis, a number of countries who were totally dependent on imports, but having a lot of cash, such as the Gulf states, realized that they couldn't rely on the market anymore. The Confederation of Potato Seed Farmers, a group of large-scale Punjabi potato farmers from India, acquiring land overseas to produce for export to India, 50,000 hectares. Large tracts of land have also been given to Ethiopian investors coming from other parts of the country. Yet while the government claims the areas leased out to foreign companies are wastelands that are not being used, a local member of the Anwara survival organization went to speak to the people currently living on these lands to find out how they view the deals and what the impacts will be when the land and water they depend on is sold out from under them. The identities of those interviewed have been disguised for their own safety. Look at these trees. They will burn them later on. This is a place where we used to go, hide ourselves, and there is a problem. Now they are clearing the forest. Beautiful good. Yeah.
There is strong local opposition to the land grab, yet the communities live in fear that their resistance will be violently repressed by the government. Those who speak out against government policy in Gambela are regularly subjected to harassment, intimidation, imprisonment and personal injury, such as the people you see in the photos. Local sources report that several opponents of the current land deals have been imprisoned, with reports of one person having been killed. It probably will create a lot of, perhaps even violence and, and, and conflicts over water, over land, and one more massive factor in making things worse. They I'm going to be here. 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 I'm going